Hello, friends and amigos. I haven't made a video in a long time, but we're back at it now, back in Irene's apartment. Uh, and today we have another special guest. Uh, this is Mark. I met him at a uh, Dr. Dog concert the other day. Dr. Dog's a great band. Look him up. <laughs> um, so this recipe, it has been in Mark's family for six generations. They brought it with them uh, overseas from Germany, and uh, we'll let him introduce it. Here we go. <laughs> Alright, as Gustav mentioned, this recipe here that we're making today is peanut butter and jelly. It's been in my family for six generations and there's four main components that you need. You need a knife. Your standard butter knife works. You can use a sharper knife if you'd like, but I don't encourage it. More risk. You also need peanut butter. Jif extra crunch is what I prefer. Now there's also, people also see Skippy peanut butter out on the shelves. I don't like their graphic designer. I think Jif is a more timeless look, which I think enhances the taste. Then you need strawberry jelly. And you might see jam on the shelves as well, but it's called peanut butter and jelly. It's not called peanut butter and jam. So I encourage you to stick to the jelly. You also need the cheapest wheat bread you can find. Do not get the top shelf extra organic stuff. Get the cheapest ones you can find and make sure it's wheat. Now for the first, this is my sixth generation recipe. At the third generation, they switched to wheat when they realized it was healthier. Originally it was white bread, but now they're doing strictly wheat within my family. So those are the four main things that you need. So when you start making your peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I usually like to have one and a half sandwiches. But the side of chips, don't have any chips on this today, but I think it's a great accompaniment to the sandwiches themselves. So we'll start with the full sandwich, come back with a half sandwich later. With the full sandwich, you're gonna want the two pieces of bread laid out appropriately in front of you. Now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna start with the jelly. Let's start jelly this guy up. Now jelly can be slippery, so be careful. Make sure you are attentive. When people make peanut butter and jelly, they might think it's a very simple process, but you need to contain the jelly that you're putting on the bread. Now the reason you start with the jelly, because the cleanup process to move over to the peanut butter is much better. If you've ever seen jars of peanut butter and jelly after someone has made peanut butter and jelly, you might see some jelly residue in the peanut butter, you might see some peanut butter residue within the jelly, and that's something you want to avoid as much as possible. I prefer a thinner layer because I prefer to have more peanut butter, but you can do your proportion as you see fit. We've got the jelly down, and now this is a very important part. You take the knife to the excess piece of bread that you'll be using later, and you wipe it clean. As you can see here, there is no, or very little residue of jelly on the knife. So, then you move to your extra crunchy peanut butter, which I prefer to the creamy peanut butter, primarily because we have teeth, and that crunch makes it um, a more enjoyable experience, whereas opposed to creamy peanut butter, you're not utilizing your teeth as much as you should, and I think that's a great part of being humans with teeth. So, you grab the peanut butter, and you spread it onto the extra piece of bread that you have here. I'm gonna put a little bit more on. As I mentioned earlier, I prefer to have more peanut butter than jelly, but you can always choose your own preference. All right, then you take the peanut butter piece, easier to control, less slidage going on. You move it on top of the peanut butter, or excuse me, on top of the jelly. And then you have another big decision to make at this point because you could just eat it as is, like this, already squared up and ready to go, or you can cut it in two different ways. You can cut it this way, or you can cut it diagonally. I prefer the diagonal, it gives you more of a triangle feel, so we'll cut it down the middle right here. And as you can see, you have your peanut butter and jelly. So that's one sandwich. That's one sandwich. Now you're trying to make the um, half sandwich, which is a little more difficult because you really have to spread apple side. Um, so you want to clean off the knife again, as I explained. So by cleaning off the knife um, here, that has now become the peanut butter side, leaving the jelly side open for a spike. So you then spread the jelly on. See, you want to make it a clear mental side in your head. You can split it down the middle with your eyes, leave enough room to then go over to the peanut butter. Now it's a little trickier because I've got jelly already spread the jelly where do I like that. You can work the edges a lot more. So there you go. Now clean, clean knife. Bring the peanut butter back up. Spread that other half of the sandwich there. And I usually have my half sandwiches, usually like not to overdo it, so it's more of a filler than it is the main course. And then you go for the classic full, which I encourage. And there, you got one and a half peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And you're ready to eat at this one. Oh, oh. You start with the half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it crossed my mind when I was putting it in my mouth. That might have been a bad decision. But yeah, that's peanut butter and jelly for you. Well, Mark, you can really see the tiny tradition put into the sandwich. It's no ordinary peanut butter and jelly. You did good work today. Thank you. I appreciate that. It means a lot. This has been Sue Star Broadcasting, and we hope you enjoyed this production. <laughs>